So we got a video by Atheist Digest called Crazy Christian Nonsense. And um, as many of you are aware, there's plenty of that in the world. So without further ado, let's uh, take a look at what this video has to offer. You are now looking oh. at a fool for Christ. This is a fool for Christ. A fool for Christ. Huh. Yeah, it's definitely in the video. But I have seen this guy before. He's fucking hilarious with all the, the high notes he belts out. Just at random times when he's speaking. It's like, ah! <laughs> I apologize for that. But, um, that's basically what he does for a living. He says a bunch of crazy nonsense, and he goes, ah! On the name of tolerance. Oh, what the fuck's wrong with tolerance? And God is not one that's gonna wink at sin. He will come and shake everything that can be shaken. Check it up, baby, by now. Man, if we think that he, we're not gonna be judged, he judged Israel. Are we better than that? When? Uh, I'm trying to think when he judged Israel. Cause I don't know if that ever happened in the Bible, but even then, the Bible is a work of fiction. So, uh, taking your sources from that is uh, kind of like uh, taking sources from Lord of the Rings. But I'm trying to think when... I'm trying to think what the hell she's talking about. Judging Israel. All the Sharknadoes. Honestly, you know, all that stuff, you know, that's all natural. That's all, those are all natural occurrences. However, if there was a Sharknado coming through the city, that's probably an act of God. Happened a long time ago in Haiti, and the people might not want to talk about it. They were under the heel of the French. Uh, you know, Napoleon the Third and whatever. Mm -hmm. And they got together and swore a pact to the devil. They said, we will <laughs> serve you if you'll get us free from the French. Mm -hmm. True story. And so... Yeah, completely true story. story. You know, I didn't just make this shit up. I mean, who do you think I am? A bullshit artist? And the Lord then allowed, led me to this man. Stand up, darling. This is Marcus Pop and my husband. Here, my husband said... Now you need to go and get a post-doctorate degree in tax law. Tax law? I hate taxes. Why should I go and do something like that? But the Lord said, be submissive. Wives, you are be submissive to your husband. And in the midst of that calling, God then called me to run for the United States Congress. And I thought, what in did the world did that be for? And my husband... Did he, like, talk to you personally? Um, was it a face-to-face -face meeting, or was it, like, a... Or did he like call your phone? Or maybe it was a Skype meeting, I don't know. My husband said, you need to do this, and I wasn't so sure. And we took three days, and we fasted, and we prayed, and we oh, they, did, they, didn't, they didn't just pray. They also fasted while doing so. That's how you know they're doubly serious. Lord, is this what you want? Is this your will? And after the long about the afternoon of day two, he made that calling sure. I'm willing to bet that God doesn't give a shit. Probably ask him and be like, I don't know. He's their own, I guess. I mean, if you want to you wanna run for this office, I mean, that's, that's fine. Not exactly uh, that into politics. I mean, you know. I don't even know where I'm going with this bit. And the Holy Ghost is Christ. The Gospel tells us that the Godhead uh, it, it existed in him fully and bodily. Jesus wasn't part man and part God. He was fully man and fully God. He wasn't 
part man and part God. He's full man and full God. Someone obviously does not know fucking math. It's like the people that say that they would believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5 just because the Bible would say so if it said it in the Bible. Look, I, I don't have any beef against people like Hawkins and Marr and uh, the other guy, the British guy who makes a fortune being an atheist. If they want to if they want to be non-believers, I don't care. That's up to them. Okay. Video over then. If you don't care, then what, why, why go on at this point? It's obvious you do care, though. You care very, very much. But it's just as much of a stretch to be an atheist as it is to believe in God. All right, Billy. Imagine if I said that there was a unicorn living in my backyard. You don't believe me. And I then say that it is just as much of a stretch to not believe that I have a unicorn in my backyard than it is to believe it. Would you think I'm crazy? I bet you would. That's exactly how you sound right now. Because there's no explanation of how the planet got here. And Hawking says it happened. So, because we don't have an explanation, and we fully admit that we don't have, have like, a tell-all explanation of how the universe began, that means you can just make up whatever bullshit you want. Sorry, but that's not exactly how it works. I mean, you gotta actually be able to prove that what you're saying is actually fucking true. It's better to say, I don't know, than to say, oh, I definitely do know, and it was my dog. My dog actually exists, by the way. Say hi to Butters. <laughs> As an elected leader, I'm all too aware of government's limitations when it comes to fixing things that are spiritual in nature. Maybe the reason why government is so limited in de dealing with spiritual stuff it's because governments deal with reality and not fantasy. People adrift in a sea of moral relativism. We need God's help. That's why I'm calling on Americans to pray and fast like Jesus did. America Honestly, prayer is just based on chance. Nothing more, nothing less. It'd be like if I got a quarter. And let's say that I claim that I can have it land on heads every single time. Would you believe that I can do that every single time? I bet you wouldn't. It's a 50-50 chance, just like prayer. I actually land on heads. Let's see if I can do it again. Nope. <laughs> as, as they say in California, evolve. And now we're a much more secular nation than we were back in 1776. So, Which is funny because the U.S. has always been a secular nation. But uh, let's not tell Billy that. Today, I think again that it, it is an attempt to revisit and rewrite history. I... <laughs> That's uh, funny coming from you. Because you think that uh, America was founded on Christian values. Therefore, you're rewriting history. Simple. Go back to what our founders and our founding documents meant. They're quite clear that um, we would uh, uh, create law based on the God of the Bible and the Ten Commandments. Here we go, our boy John Adams. The government of the United States is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So you can find a whole like world of info on this type of stuff. And it all leads to the same conclusion in the public square, we cannot talk about or talk to that God that is international motto. Yeah, we can only... 
Who's even talking about the public square? We're talking about in government, all right? There's this whole thing about um, separation of church and state in the United States. It was kind of proposed by Thomas Jefferson, the man that wrote the Declaration of Independence. Hey, we also need to remember, though, Margaret Thatcher and other foreign leaders and foreign observers thinking America is such a great and exceptional nation because we do base our laws, our values on the God of the Bible, the Old and the New Testament. Right. So we, it's, it's you can go back to this here. Just read it. And it's not the only source you can go to. There's a whole bunch of other sources you can find. This is not a country that's based on Christian values. <laughs> that's who I'm talking about. I have a friend whose wife suffers from Alzheimer's. She doesn't even recognize him anymore, and as you can imagine, the marriage has been rough. My friend has gotten bitter at God for allowing his wife to be in that condition, and now he started seeing another woman. He says that he should be allowed to see other people because his wife, as he knows her, is gone. I'm not quite sure what to tell him. Please help. Well, I don't know about Pat Robertson. I'm not sure if he's the best person to give advice on this sort of thing, but um, as a person with a conscience, um, this guy's a piece of shit. I mean, his wife has Alzheimer's. So he's going to see other people while he's married to her because as far as he can as far as he's concerned she's gone that is probably the most disgusting thing you can possibly do to someone that you claim to love think about it his wife's mind is dying and he's seeing other women but, let's see what Pat has to say about this. Pretty sure he's going to say something stupid. I, I know it sounds cruel, but he's, he, if he's going to do something, he should divorce her and start all over again. But That's funny. I thought that the Bible was against divorce. Even more so than homosexuality. As a Christian, I thought you would know this. And now for an oldie but goodie. Oh boy. I wonder what this one is. Behold, the atheist <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> now if you study a well-made banana, you'll find on the far side, there are three ridges. This on video gives side, me so ridges. much fucking joy. You your hand, the banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. You'll find the maker of the banana, Almighty God, has made it with a non-slip surface. Like my dick. As, when you pull the tab, the contents don't squirt in your face. Like my You'll dick. You'll find the notice has a point at the top for ease of entry. It's just the right shape for the human mouth. Space Monkeys, Chapter 2. Mm. And God said, let there be pink space monkeys making pizza on Mars, and it was so. So anyway, that's the end of the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, yeah. Ah! Have a nice day.